This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, in today's video we're going to model uh, parts of a cast iron fence. So we're going to look at, at twisted and tapered rods, we're going to look at ornaments and so forth. Okay, so uh, let's check it out. Here we go. So I loaded up a reference image and it's not something that we are going to uh, follow uh, exactly. The point of this video is to teach you how to create individual elements, okay? So how do you create these curved, twisted rods and so forth, okay? That's the idea. So I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques. We're not gonna make this uh, entire fence here because that's gonna be tedious and boring, but just so you know, all right, cool. Now I assume that the, the top uh, horizontal flat pieces, they shouldn't be a problem. It's just simply taking a cube I'll just uh, move that image back a little bit. You take a cube, you hit R to push it down, and then you pull it out and you have a top bar like that, okay? Now, same thing with the little uh, spheres there, the little balls, that shouldn't be a problem either. So what's the deal with those twisted bars, okay? Well, for that, you would take, uh, let's say, a polygon cube, and what we'll do is we'll uh, stretch it out like so, and we're going to add subdivision to it first. Without subdivision, no twist. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control A to open up our attribute editor. We're going to go into our polycube one, which is this guy. And let's see, we're going to increase the subdivision level, not in height, in depth, no, in width. Yeah, there we go. All right, so let's do, let's say, a minimum of 100. Okay. You can probably do less if you need low poly, but this should be fine. Okay, so let's twist this guy. What we're going to do is we're going to go to deform, nonlinear, and twist. Okay, and when we do that, yeah, thank you. When we do that, we get this bend deform um, control. Okay, we need to rotate that guy so it's in line with our object. So we're going to hit E to rotate it. We're going to hold down J as we do so. And now it's in line with our object. Now, we're going to go into our attribute editor again. We're going to go to the twist tab and let's see what happens when we move this angle. As you can see, it's starting to twist my object like so, right? Cool. Now, let's say I want to have a section um, twisted. I can go the other way, obviously. Let's say I want to have a section twisted or even I want a value, let's say, that's much higher. Let's do 2000, something like that go back to 500. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to edit, delete by type and history. And what it can do if I decide to is take this face, for example, hit control E, hit W to pull it out. And then from here on, that piece will be straight. And I can do the same at the top, obviously. Okay. Control E and W and pull out. Now keep in mind that when you're doing this twist, you need to keep an eye on your angle because you can see that this extrusion is straight with this face facing upwards and this one is not, okay? And you can control that when you're doing your actual twist to see how that should work out, okay? So that's the twist part. Okay, let's do the next one. What if we have a new cube and I'll pull it out hit R, stretch it out like so, have to zoom in. What if I want that to be twisted and tapered? Okay, well, no problem. We're gonna repeat some steps here. We're gonna go into Control A once again. Let's uh, turn some stuff off here, hang on. Okay. So we're gonna do that thing again. Let's hit that to 100. Okay, we're going to go back in. Now, actually, let's do that different. Sorry, guys. I just want to show you a couple of different techniques. So what we'll do here is we'll take a, a polygon cube. We'll hit W. We'll pull that out. I have to zoom in. And instead of creating that cube, we're going to go to face. And we're going to delete all of these faces with the exception of one, which is this one. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, create and uh, curve tool, EP curve tool, okay? 
Now, we need to figure out where that thing is. It's right here. Hopefully you can see it. So we're going to start somewhere here. We're going to click once like so. I'll, I'm just going to do this in a way you guys can see it better, right? Hang on. So this is our guy, all right? Cool. So I'm going to go to create and uh, curve tool, EP curve tool. I got one click there and I'm going to hold down shift as I click to have it snap and create a nice straight line like so. Okay. So when we hit enter, we get that. Now what I can do is I can right click it to object mode. I'm just going to move this a little bit closer toward my curve here. I'm going to right click at a face, so not object, face, and then shift select this guy, right? So now when I hit control E to extrude, a couple of things I can do. First, I can go in, I need to go in and increase the division level, right? Because otherwise I won't be able to uh, twist that. Now you can see that I got a twist option here, but I don't have a taper option, and that's the one I want. So up in the corner, you got this little thingy here. And when I select that, I can go down here and select taper. Okay. So let's say I only want to have the taper. I can taper up and down like so, as you can see, but I, I can also do both. So I can twist like this and taper. Okay. And I'll just increase this twist value. You can see it's a bit too low poly. So we'll increase the divisions. Let's set that to, I don't know, 500 or so. That's fine. So now we can uh, do that twist thing. Let's do 500 on the twist and we can tweak the taper as well up and down. Okay. And that will give you all sorts of possibilities. All right. And the last thing I want to show you, which is basically uh, related to this technique is how do you create those curls? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into this view here. We're going to just get rid of this. Yep. There we go. And let's see, we're going to go to create and CV curve tool. And we're just going to start to click on our screen. And basically you can make any kind of shape you want. Okay. Now I'm doing this incredibly fast with a mouse, so it doesn't look that good. It should be nice and smooth. You can tweak these curves by right clicking the control vertex. So I can take one of these vertex points, hit W and I can kind of move that around if I like, if I'm not happy with, you know, the curve that I created and so forth. So you can do that just so you know. All right. And that said, once we have all this, we're going to go in and create another cube and be sure to start at the beginning of your curve, not the end. Okay. So I'm going to hit F to zoom in. This is basically where I started. So I'm going to right click at a face. I can delete all of that. And I'm going to move this one down to the start of my curve as close as I can get F to zoom in. And I also want to kind of have the correct angle towards that curve. So I'm going to hit E to rotate and kind of push it that way. Okay. So once I'm satisfied that that looks all right, again, I'm going to right click at a face, select that face, shift select the curve, hit control E to extrude. Now you see this going straight out because there's no subdivision. Okay. So I'm going to start to drag and increase the subdivision level. And as I do that, you're seeing that it's starting to curl. Okay. 75 is not enough. Let's do 500. That's a bit much. Let's do 250. Let's see. 250, right? Cool. So that worked okay. So what if I want this to be a twisted uh, circle thingy, whatever. Okay. In that case, what I'll do is I'll increase my twist of value as before. And again, we'll bump up that number. Let's go to 500. Let's even go to, let's say 3000. And you can clearly see that this twist goes all the way down. 
Now, if you want to have this as part of a fancy fence, what you can do is, let's say, we'll increase that to 5,000, and we'll also introduce a slight taper, okay? So there you go, all right? And it tapers based on where you're at, and I'm down here, right? So it goes from here to there. So when I tweak that, you can see that either this end is becoming much thicker or thinner. Now, if you got this effect and you're happy with it, you can right click the object mode, go to edit, delete by type history. And now it's kind of frozen, if you will. And what you can do is hit three to preview smooth it. Well, you don't have enough subdivision here to, uh, you know, let that show. So we're not going to do that. You do see it a little bit, but we're not going to do that. Okay. So we're going to hit one to go back. So yeah, a couple of techniques, um, one more, and then we'll call it a day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a uh, polygon cube. You know these little pointy things on top of a fence, the ones that you know tear your pants when you climb over it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit R, we're gonna pull this up like so, and then we're gonna go in to insert edge loop, option box, let's do one, let's say somewhere around there. Okay, we're gonna hit F to zoom in. Here we are, Q on our keyboard, right click vertex. We're gonna hit R, we're gonna kind of flare that out like so. Now let's flare these in, if that's a thing. We're gonna hit W, we're gonna push that up like that. Then we're gonna go in, add another edge loop somewhere around here and then we're going to go in again and we're going to go to multiple two that's fine and we're going to add two right there okay we're going to queue on a keyboard and we're going to get out like this we're going to get object mode we're going to hit r we're going to push the whole thing in a little bit and then we're going to take faces like that control E to extrude R to scale out like so and you can bring it in like that if you like and what we'll do here is we'll just kind of stretch that up a little bit and then we're gonna hit R and we're gonna bring them in Okay, now I want it to be a bit more pointy than that. So I'm gonna go to the sides here. Not that few, but this few. And we're gonna get rid of our twisted rod that's in the way. So we're gonna go to object mode, control H to hide it. So here is our fence bit. And I hit four, I'm gonna right click at the vertex. I'm gonna drag select these two and push that in like that and then what we get is something looking like this okay you can decide to take these two points up if you like and then you will get something slightly different like so or so you know I typically want to keep it like this okay so yeah, that is basically it. Just a few techniques for you to use when modeling fences. Okay, so hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye.